This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Where did I put my acoustic coupler again? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So, for many in our audience... Or our potential audience. (laughs) Those actually out there. Online equals the internet. Or maybe just Facebook, even. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But for some of us older folks, we remember an online world with no simple browser to access it. Yes. (laughs) My first online experience happened around 1978 and involved a friend whose dad worked for what became Mm AT&T. He had this suitcase-like box with a keyboard a small printer, and an acoustic coupler in it. And tell me, Mark, <laughs> what is an acoustic coupler? Well, back before... <laughs> back before phone deregulation, you couldn't just plug a phone into the wall yourself. Yes. You had to lease a phone, and it used this weird four-prong plug. Yes. <laughs> a coupler allowed you to plug the handset and they were all the same back then, yes. so there was no standardization issue, mm-hmm. into cups that would send the audio signals back and forth. You just plunk it in. Yes. So we played tic-tac-toe by typing in a code. Woo! <laughs> we typed in a code, and then a printout would occur of the whole screen. There's no, there's no display, it's just the printer. And then we would type another code in, and so on and so forth. And you were actually talking to somebody over... The acoustic coupler and playing with them. Right. (laughs) Not a very green solution because it wasted a huge amount of paper. You would print a new piece of paper. Right. (laughs) So what was your first experience? Well, you know, I I just hardly even remember. (laughs) Boy, um, it was probably something along the lines of uh, of getting on the source or something like that. Right. You know, I, I I. Because because your dad was in. My dad was really into computers. Probably. You know, when I was a freshman in high school, or even before that, he had a home computer, mm-hmm. and um, and he, well, we may talk about this later yeah. too. But he was one of those first guys to get on one of these, um, you know, what were basically service providers right. then, um, to get online bulletin board kind of things. Right. So you know, it was very interesting. But you know, it was the whole modem <laughs> hooking the phone yeah. up kind of thing. So. Um, but I, I probably really don't remember the first time. Mm. I mean, yeah. I, I was trying to remember my first email address, yeah. <laughs> and I don't even remember that. Well, so. yeah. Well, in the early 80s, I got an Atari 1200XL computer, and it was hard to justify a computer back then. Yes. Because you could play games, maybe, you could write programming. Or you could enter your mom's recipes, which was always the use case they pushed for it. It's like, yes. mm-hmm. yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to type in all your mom's recipes, and then when she needs one, all she has to do is fire up the computer in her kitchen. And it takes about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Rather than know. opening the recipe box. Um, now, my mom still has a whole bunch of recipes <laughs> that were printed out on a dot matrix printer. <laughs> and they're in her little book now, but you can tell they're dot matrix printed recipes from when that was done. So, just, just an aside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then I bought a 300 baud modem. What's baud? Well, that's the term for the number of bits that could be sent in a second. So mm-hmm. at that point, I joined CompuServe, and which was one of these several online firms. And CompuServe was actually um, sort of a, a stepchild of the source, which I mentioned right. earlier. Right. Um, and and so even before CompuServe, there were these bulletin boards online. You could log directly into the bulletin board. Yes. So some guy in their house yeah. <laughs> would have their phone hooked up to yes. a computer. Right. And most of the time, these guys had dedicated phone lines right. for it because they wanted these bulletin boards up. And so you would log into their bulletin board yes. and just post messages on their computer. It, it was um, an interesting time. Right, because... With that, you again, the guy may have only had one phone line, yeah. so only one person could be c- connecting at any one time. Yes, mm-hmm. so you had to you had to wait until that person, uh, so the last person, gets off. It, it and it really was more of a bulletin board, like you think of, you know, pinning a, a, a right. thing, a note right. up, because you can't really get a response right away, yeah. like you would now. Right, right. So. The online services that went out were mostly created from these business-centric companies Mm -hmm. that used unused 
capacity of mm -hmm. their timeshare system. Right. Uh, it was all text-based. It was all proprietary, mm -hmm. which means a CompuServe user couldn't interact with a Prodigy or a Genie or a Delphi user. Right. So you had to pay based on your usage. Mm -hmm. A meter was running based on how long you were online. Right. So you did what you wanted to do, and you signed off quickly because the meter was running. And it's sort, sort of, in a way, like your cell phone data plan now. Yeah. Except your data was much more limited. Yes. <laughs> and and there is obviously less to do then. Right. Yeah. And so to sign on to one of these services, all you had to do was make sure no one else in the house was using the phone. Right. <laughs> Unless you had a dedicated line, which hardly anybody did. We did. You, oh, sorry. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> If, we if, had four girls oh, in the house. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess you had to. Uh, if someone else picked up the phone while you were online, you would generally be disconnected. But then you, if they did too, you would hear that noise. Yeah. You can do the noise better than yeah. I can. <laughs> yeah. So if you then look up a local call-in number, mm -hmm. if one was available, in a physical book, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you would then... Fire up your computer and your modem. Mm -hmm. You would type in commands to call the number. You would hear something like this. And then you would sign in with your account. CompuServe was generally a five-digit number, a comma, and then a four-digit number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's all there was to it. Right. <laughs> so they had things like forums, kind of like groups today. Mm -hmm. You had online newspapers, which cost more to access than just going and getting the paper newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Games. You could check your stocks. Mm -hmm. There was email, but only other other users of your service. Right. Shopping, weather, all the things you have websites and apps for today. But most of it, as you said, was text-based. Yep. It was very, very text-based. Right. And if you think about it, really, um, at this point, on your com home computer, too, you're barely getting into Windows right. and, and into a graphical user interface yes. at all. Yeah. So you're used to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, at one point, I switched over to Genie for a while, which was General Electric service. Mm -hmm. But I think they were cheaper. But I came back to CompuServe. Mm-hmm. In fact, when I was doing the public access TV show in the 90s, Vast Wasteland, my email address had a CompuServe suffix initially. Yeah, well, I think part of that, too, was by that time, I was was I working for CompuServe? I then? think that was before then. <clears throat> okay. Um, as you mentioned, the, the, the bulletin board systems, or BBSs. So this is also where the, the earliest forms of copyright infringement happened. Yes. I downloaded a TNG... Next Generation Star Trek episode guide from one of them. This is a bound printout <laughs> that I have of this. <laughs> yeah, because that's the only way you could get it. Right. I mean, it was available on the internet. Right. You could look at it. Yeah. But really, it was something that you'd have to <laughs> probably print out to look at. So. Yeah. And as times went on, the services moved from text to more graphics based. And that's as as there, as your um, operating systems developed as well. You know, your yeah. your Windows and your and your, your Mac. Mac. So then America Online arrived, which became CompuServe's main competitor and later their buyer. Yeah, and at this point in time, you also have to keep in mind that that if you were on CompuServe, you were on CompuServe. You didn't go beyond CompuServe. Right. You logged into CompuServe and all the services were provided by... They were a provider, a content provider. Absolutely, they were. Not a, a network access point. Right. And so AOL came, and so the big the big thing there was, you know, are we offering what CompuServe is offering? Is are we offering what AOL is offering? We all have to offer those same services. Yeah, it became an arms race. <laughs> yes. And that's why they moved from a, a metered rate to X number of hours per month for a set cost, which kept going up as the interest increased and more people mm -hmm. jumped on. Yes. And this started the constant floppies and then CDs arriving in the mail. Yes. Yeah, so you know you would get your your CompuServe or your AOL floppy to sign up, which actually made it a lot easier to sign up too, because as you were saying, looking up the numbers before, right. supposedly these um, starter disks came. You logged in with an 800 number, and it would automatically then turn you over to your local number. But exactly. That also caused yeah. problems. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and then a lot of people ended up using, especially the CDs for crafting. Yes. <laughs> because there were so many coming yes. in the mail. Yes. So then the internet and the web, which is not the same thing. No, not at all. <laughs> brought this era to an end. Right. So the internet happened basically when the services started getting together and hooking them up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the internet is everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the services tried to bring a form of the web in while keeping that walled garden going. Yes. But it didn't last very long because people were like, no, I want the internet. And people just ended up just using their service as an entry point to get to leave the the garden. Right, right. (laughs) And, and, you know, it's it's kind of funny because a lot of people... I worked at CompuServe during that end phase. Basically from... Um, I worked there when before the web started developing, mm-hmm. up until about the time that it was absorbed into AOL. Right. And there would be people who would who would call up and and say they want to get on the internet, but they would have no idea what the internet was. <laughs> yeah, just I want to get there, whatever it is, I right. want it. Right. Uh huh. And then there were other people who would think that you know, like their their software is the internet. Right. Yeah. Well, you I lo- I loaded the internet on my computer, yes. uh-huh. and then but I want to do this. Yes, <laughs> and it and, and there were just all kinds of weird and funny things that went on. So I remember, um, like I said, when the web came in, and that's when people really wanted to start getting off of the CompuServe mm. services right. and online. Right. And um, I remember people talking about the eBay. <laughs> you know? Going to the eBay. And um, and it was a big thing among you know in the bullpen where where we mm. were working and everything you know. I, I remember the eBay coming up, and um, was it Jenny McCarthy who had that webcam? Wasn't there a Jenny uh, who had yeah, a webcam? Jenny Cam. Jenny Cam. I don't think it was her. I think it was somebody else. Some other Jenny. I yeah. don't know. But, but yeah, so that was a big thing that everybody <laughs> talked about. But everybody who would call in on our lines, because I was in um, tech support, would be like, well, how do I get on the Internet? <laughs> and you would try to tell these people things, and, and, you know, it's like, well, you you know, all you have to do, well, what do I do when I get there? Yeah, you know? yeah, well. <laughs> and it's hard to imagine now that there was a time when people didn't know what the Internet would do. Right. So, um, trying to think of some other things, like those disks that you put in and loaded up. Sometimes those people would get on and it wouldn't change the number to the right number mm-hmm. and they'd either end up with huge long distance right. charges yes. for calling the wrong number or huge out of network basically charges mm-hmm. where they were charging a number that, that timed them. People would end up with hundreds and hundreds of dollars <laughs> worth of bills and we would just write them off yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And the other fun thing is like when people would call up and they would say, you know, what's this charge on my credit card? <laughs> and I think that... Um, you know, there were a number of people who had the source, right. which we talked about. Yeah. And they had it on their credit card for like 20 years. Yes. And they never they never used it. They right. signed up for it at one time, and they were just now realizing what it was. And they are like, can I get a refund? It's the, it's, it's the health club of the tech industry. Indeed. <laughs> you join up, you forget you're on it, and you pay a fortune. And you're like, I'm going to get back to that pretty soon. Right. <laughs> And, you know, there's still some vestiges of that old Internet yeah, out there. Yeah. Um, s- some of the things like with file transfer protocol, FTP sites, it used to be that you couldn't send large files through your email or you didn't have things like Dropbox right. or anything. Yeah. So they would set up these file transfer protocols that you could use to send these large files places. And... Um, there were actually special sites set up for that and special things, and you always had to type it in with code. <laughs> and um, I was trying to remember what the name of the um, old uh, bulletin board things. There was a, you know, where, and and I still occasionally see the remnants of them, but I can't remember what the name of it is. But it was basically, and basically it's sort of like um, what Reddit is now, with yeah. these bulletin boards oh, yeah. where these under... Absolutely. Under, Under the, the radar, radar yeah. things went on, yeah. and people would exchange the files like this one and, and things. So um, sometimes I miss those days. Yeah, but the not, wild west yes. of the internet, <laughs> yes, so to speak. <laughs> so, um, but now we just have our Gmail addresses with no, yeah, <laughs> no specialness to them. Mm-hmm. But I guess a point of fact would be, you know. How old is your Gmail address? And right. that that tells <laughs> that you indicates. how long you've been on the internet. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Because I got I got a invitation only Gmail address Ooh. way back when, you know. <laughs> well, obviously we got a lot to talk about <laughs> on this. I could talk about this forever, but Mark is telling me to shut up. <laughs> no, no, so no, no. So in the no. meantime, <laughs> you should check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.